Good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to the Suburban Proletarian. My name is Greg, and I don't mind admitting to you I'm pretty frustrated at this point. It's the middle of February, and I am still trying to figure out how to review my Christmas present from my lovely wife, the uh, Zodiac Super Seawolf 68. I want this to be a special review because it's a special watch and uh, I'm having a hard time with it. I think this is a problem I run into if I spend too much time researching a project and thinking about a project and trying to memorize dates and facts and figures. Uh, I don't work with a teleprompter here. I don't have somebody up there turning cue cards. Uh, so it all ends up as a big clot up here in my head. And sometimes it's hard to get out. Three times I have sat down here in front of the camera, in front of the lights and the microphone, and three times I have come away frustrated and disappointed and disheartened. And so now it occurs to me, maybe it's time to step back and break the ice with a lighter, shorter video that didn't require much uh, research or actually any research really, maybe just a little bit. Uh, and as it happens, I just took delivery two days ago on a new product, uh, which I wasn't intending to review. It's actually meant to be part of the set here. So I thought, let's just take a quick look at this. It's actually a pretty neat product, and it is a timekeeping device, although it's not a wristwatch. It is, in fact, a clock. Um, not a very fancy or expensive clock. This is actually a fairly cheap plastic clock made in Canada by a company called Trintec Industries. Trintec's actually located just across the border in Ontario, um, in a place called Ajax, Ontario, which is sort of east, northeast of Toronto, uh, right on the shores of Lake Ontario. And Trintec Industries makes a variety of watches and clocks, and I think some other items all of which have sort of a, either an aviation or nautical theme. Um, a lot of their watches and some of their clocks are made to resemble aircraft instruments. Um, this clock I bought because it's in a rather unusual format, at least here for the United States. I became familiar with clocks like this in the military. Uh, and some of you, if you're watching in Europe or Asia, you may use clocks that are set up in this format. But this is a true 24-hour clock. The minute hand goes around the dial once every hour, just as any clock does. But the hour hand only circumnavigates the dial once in a day. So you've got two 12-hour periods all on one dial. Midnight, noon, morning, evening. And uh, it's kind of unusual for here in the United States. And I wanted something different to uh, hang on the set. I actually planned on hanging it on the wall right here behind my shoulder, but I think it may actually be a little distracting and it's sort of a strange place to hang a clock. It's very low on the wall. It may not look low in the camera here, but it's very low on the wall. So this may end up in our kitchen instead. But anyway, I thought we'd take a look at it. It's a pretty nice clock. I don't know if it warrants going over to the tabletop to take a look at a clock that's 12 inches in diameter. But since that is our custom here on the channel, let's go over to the tabletop and take a little bit closer look at this clock. All right, guys, so here it is. Uh, you can see that it just about perfectly spans uh, the space between the 3 and 13 inch mark. So it's just about exactly 10 inches in diameter. Um, this is just a cheap plastic styrene case. The dial is, I think, just printed on black paper. Nothing too fancy there. The really cool thing about this watch is the 24 hour format. And with the black dial and the white indices, it's kind of reminiscent of a style of clock that's used very often uh, by the military. One big difference is this dial uh, seems to be divided up into four quadrants. There are four large numerals, midnight, noon, six o'clock in the morning, and six o'clock in the evening. If this were a military clock, it would probably be divided up into six watch sections. So you would have a large numeral at 400, you'd have a large numeral at 800, 
obviously, still 1,200, 1,600, 2,000, and midnight for six four-hour watch sections. That would be a standard military clock. But uh, anyway, it's still pretty cool. Uh, it's keeping pretty good time thanks to uh, a rather cheap movement here made by Cortex. These are very, very common in use with all sorts of wall clocks like this. It is, of course, powered by a single AA battery. And Cortex makes these watches in uh, the movements in China, and they come in 12-hour and 24-hour formats. Obviously, this one is the 24-hour format job. Um, if you ever needed to replace this, these are very, very easy to work on. They're just held in place by a little brass nut there. Uh, these are really made to be worked on by hobbyists. The uh, movements are not meant to be serviced or repaired. As a matter of fact, the gear train inside this is all sealed up inside a little clear plastic housing, uh, which you could see if I open it up, and I'm not going to open it up. Uh, anyway, and these cost about 8 to $12. You can buy these movements. So even if this clock goes bad, if the movement goes bad, these are very easy to replace and cheap. Um, it has been running quite accurately. One problem I have noted with this, and it's common with all of these sort of cheap um, wall clocks that are run by these sort of AA uh, battery step motor quartz movements, is the fact that there's a lot of slop in the gear train. It can be very difficult to set this and have the minute hand exactly on the minute mark when the uh, uh, second hand strikes zero. As you can see, I've got it pretty close right now, but it takes a little while. One problem with setting these things is the way you adjust the hands is with this little tiny wheel right here. And I don't know if you can see, but there are indentations in there. The best way to set one of these is to put a ballpoint pen tip into one of those indentations, and it'll make it a lot easier to turn the wheel. Um, but despite the slop in the gear train and everything else, this clock seems to be running very reliably. It's, well, it's been running for two days now, uh, but it's, more importantly, it's running very accurately, almost perfect time over the last two days. Um, these are cheap, cheap movements, but they can run for a very long time. I had a uh, promotional clock. It was a cash register topper from back in the 1980s that had virtually the exact same movement in it and um, it was a promotional item for some brand of cigarettes I don't remember maybe Winston's and the store I was working at was going to throw it out and I took it home and put it in my bedroom and it sat on top of my dresser keeping time for about 20 years I think uh, I probably only got rid of it maybe 10 years ago it certainly didn't break and it ran after having been discarded by the store, it ran in my house for like 20 years. So these can actually be quite reliable movements. And the price on this clock, it's not super cheap. You could get a cheaper clock at Walmart, but um, I think the MSRP on this clock is like $45. I got it for just slightly over 30 bucks on eBay. And I just think it's a neat clock. I bought it to hang here in the studio. I don't think it's going to work out, so it's probably going in my kitchen, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. And more importantly, I managed to shoot a video without getting frustrated. So let's go back over to the bookshelves and wrap this up. All right, so that was the Zulu Time 24-hour clock from Trintec Industries or Trintec Canada. Um, again, it's not a really fancy clock. It's not particularly expensive. It's mostly made out of plastic and it has a cheap but reliable quartz movement in it. The movement actually is quite accurate. Um, over the last 48 hours, it's only lost about a tenth of a second. So that's pretty good accuracy even by quartz watch standards. It's certainly plenty accurate for a wall clock and uh, I'm not sure again I don't know if it's going here on the set or uh, maybe down in our kitchen or something but uh, I'm pretty excited to have this clock it's a fun clock and it's not one that you're likely to see very often here in the United States anyway where we mostly work with 12-hour format clocks 
Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button down below. If you hated it, on the other hand, go ahead and click the dislike button. You're not really going to hurt my feelings. You will be giving me valuable feedback, though. So that's cool. If you did enjoy watching this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. It takes a fraction of a second. It doesn't cost a dime. And of course, you can unsubscribe at any time if you don't like the channel. If you're already a subscriber, go ahead and click that little bell icon down below. That will allow YouTube to send you notifications when I post updates to the channel. And when I do that, I hope to see each of you here then. Later, guys.